welcome you here to St Thomas's this morning. I particularly want to welcome the music team to sit down or stand up or do something appropriate up the front. And the rest of you, uh, it's lovely, lovely to see you uh, together with us this morning. Uh, we have a great treat this morning. The Reverend Dr Peter Adam has come uh, to preach and speak uh, to us. Uh, I was baptised by Peter in a bathtub up the front of St Jude's Church in Carlton in 1985. I was, Kathy and I were married by Peter up the front of St Jude's Church in 1990. Uh, I worked with Peter through the 1990s in a congregation full of university students in which Chris and Sally Helm were uh, not, well Sally was not Sally Helm, she was Sally Hall. <laughs> Uh, at that stage and there are a few other people here who snuck in who know Peter well for uh, uh, many years but for those of you who don't uh, know Peter so well I wanted to ask Peter if you might come up the front and I might just ask you a couple of questions uh, Peter your, your ministry was marked by a passion and a plan to raise up other ministers and you might be speaking about that today um, how did that come about uh, well I was at St Jude's and um, in those days there were uh, committees looking at ministers for churches and I was on one of those committees and a really good church uh, wanted a gospel minister and we couldn't find one for that church. And I thought, that's a bad situation. Then I thought, um, actually, uh, the Bible says we should be raising up gospel ministers, not only for Melbourne and for Australia, but for the world. So God, God put that on my heart, I think, as a passion, yeah. And um, Peter, not only had a passion but a long-term <coughs> plan um, you're getting on a bit now aren't you you retired um, <laughs> sorry yes, you, yes. You, you speak up young <laughs> man <laughs> you, 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 you young people don't speak up you that, mumble all the time that's why we've got a microphone <laughs> you retired some years ago from being the principal of Ridley College yeah. which is a theological college for training uh, ministers uh, how do you think about retirement now and what are you doing in retirement? Uh, well, um, I've been running some uh, training courses for, for young ministers who need some help with their preaching. <laughs> um, and uh, this year I began some training courses for young ministers who need some help with their praying. Um, and Peter's prayers are really helpful. This is, I hadn't thought about this, but this is a complete aside. He occasionally posts them on Facebook. So if you ask to become a Facebook friend of Peter's, you won't get, um, in my experience, funny photos of his holidays. <laughs> um, you're more likely to get uh, his most recent prayer that he's praying for himself and uh, for others, which is a very helpful ministry. Thank you, Peter. Much as I'd like to see the photos of your holiday as well. Great. Well, uh, you can sit down. You're going to get to stand up later and, uh, and talk to us. Uh, Peter is preaching to us on the topic of raising up gospel workers from Revelation chapter 5. And one of our great privileges is to have God's plans and his certain future opened up for us. So we read in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, after this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Well, with that great privilege in mind, uh, let's pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart 
and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to uh, prepare your throats to sing, but also prepare your hearts and your spirits to meet with God as we worship together. Please stand and we'll sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Please stay standing. Um, our next song invites us to uh, turn our eyes to the book of Revelation and to those images of crowds greater than anyone could count from every tribe and nation and language worshipping Christ the King. So, yeah, let's sing together the Revelation song.
please be seated. Uh, morning, friends. My name is Joshua. I'm on staff here at St. Thomas's. A special welcome to you if you are new and visiting this morning, or if you have just returned from a holiday where you were putting all those pictures on Facebook for us to see. We like seeing them very much. Um, I'm really just here to give one notice, which is that Clay Youth Camp is coming up uh, on Thursday, the 29th of June. So if you're in high school, you can come. If you are not in high school, please pray for us to have a wonderful in time where we engage deeply with God and with each other. Uh, thanks. Hi everyone, Put your, get your calendars out. We are having a retreat and we're slowly putting all the details together. We're looking at, um, we're having Karen Winsimius come and uh, speak to us on camp and we're looking at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter nine, blessed to be a blessing. We're following that theme that we've been looking at all year at St. Tom's. It's at Phillip Island Adventure Resort. So there's going to be lots to do I might even interview Evie at another time because she's been there on a school camp and she had an amazing time. It's right near Smith's Beach. There's coffee, like barista coffee at the, at the campsite as well, and then also barista coffee as you wander past. There will be a registration form being built and open soon, so please keep your eyes out in um, our weekly updates, in our newsletters and all those sorts of places so that you can register as soon as registration's open. And I will be finalising costings this week and getting that information out to you ASAP. Please be patient with us. It's our first crack at having a retreat in a really long time. So your patience and your support and your love and prayer is truly appreciated. Thank you. And your attendance. And your attendance. You must come. You don't just pray, just come. All right. It'll be a great time. The aim is for us to build community together, to get to know each other better and to have a wonderful time while we do it as well. I think the impatience comes from the eagerness. We can't wait. It's going to be great. Thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is John Carrick, um, the lead minister here at St. Tom's. Great to see so many people here this morning, and welcome if you are visiting. Um, a few notices from me. Um, first is we're about to do the rosters for the next term ahead, and so please, uh, just to make the, the job easier for us, if you could get on to Alvanto and fill in your unavailability if you know that there are certain dates that you're, you're not able to uh, fulfill uh, roster requests. And uh, also, if you can't do a particular date, if you can organise a swap, that would be fantastic. Um, I understand last week there was a bit of an issue with video and sound and... Is that right? So sorry about that. Um, the video that we had from Nungilinga College will be available. So if you click on the link that comes out with the weekly emails, you'll be able to watch it. Uh, there's no other way of actually navigating online to find it because it's, um, uh, the, you need the link. So please remember to click on that. We have our Introducing God series coming up on the 20th of July. This explains... Uh, Jesus Christ and what it means to be a Christian, have faith in God through Christ. It's only a six week uh, course. I'll be doing it along with uh, Karen Morris. Uh, you're more than welcome to come along to it. Or if you know someone uh, that you would love to invite, uh, then please do so. Uh, we want to be a church where we're seeing people introduced to God, introduced to Christ, coming to faith in Him. And this is a really great way for someone to explore uh, Christianity. Um, MMA, end of financial year. I believe there's a slide. And uh, this is an opportunity to give at this time of the year as we get close to end of financial year. And uh, the medical mission aid is seeking uh, money and appeal uh, to continue their ministries. Also, CMS uh, dinner is coming up. Uh, on, at 7pm on Saturday the 24th of June. Once again, there will be links in our weekly email to be able to navigate to register for that event. Uh, so let me commend that to you. Finally, um, there's an Israel tour planned for 
2024, you may know that last year, uh, myself and Noah went to Israel. It was a lifelong dream for me, having read the Bible for so long and about the places where Jesus was, the Old Testament, all focused so much on Israel. And uh, so finally, I got to go and it was uh, a wonderful experience. And we're providing that opportunity for others who may want to go. Um, Noah has been reading his Bible uh, since, and he's said to me on a number of occasions, it's so good when I'm reading and I remember the places that it's talking about. Uh, so if you've never been to Israel before and you would love to go, then please come along to the information session. Uh, it's a fair way off as far as the tour is planned. It's like uh, October, November in 2024. But the info session is coming up on the 29th of June. That's a Thursday. Once again, it will be linked in our weekly email, so you can register for that event uh, if you would like to come out, come and find out more. Going to the info session doesn't mean you've signed up. It just means you're coming to hear about it. Thanks so much. I think the kids have to come up the front now, and we're going to have a song. We are going to sing a song, and I'm really grateful to Catherine, who introduced this song to us a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Hi, tour, hi tours. <laughs> um, so please, feel free to come up, whether you're young or old, whatever age you are. This is a Colin Buchanan song that invites everyone from everywhere, or more to the point, anyone from anywhere, to come and follow Jesus and to find rest and wholeness and hope and joy there. So yeah, let's sing together, follow the Saviour. from Albany, mums and dads from Wangaratta, folks from Wellers Creek, follow the Saviour, Jesus the King, glorify the Lord of everyone and everything. Across this land, everlasting hope is yours if you but take it. Good morning, everyone. Well, yesterday I was pondering a question, and that question was, what is leadership? What is good leadership? And what is bad leadership? So, I could have Googled this information, but then I thought that down here in front of me, I've got a whole lot of people from Generation Alpha. So, less than 13 years of age. If you're less than 13 years of age, you are part of Generation Alpha. And I thought, what did Generation Alpha do? They don't Google, they YouTube. 
So, did I, could I have a volunteer? Is there a volunteer who would be interested? Molly, that would be wonderful. Come up the front onto the red step. So, when I asked YouTube what makes a good leader, I was told that it is somebody who can be followed. So would you like to put that flag up really high so that people can see it? Someone who could be followed. Someone who feels comfortable standing in front of a big crowd. And also, someone who stands out from the crowd as well. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Molly. <laughs> You're being a very good volunteer. Now, one more thing. I think we can forget about this because Molly's already got brown hair. Okay. So how do you think we're going? Do you think this makes a good leader? Yeah? 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 All right. Well, thank you very much, Molly, for that demonstration of what makes a good leader according to YouTube. But then, then I thought there must be more to this. So I continued my research and I thought a lot of the adults are probably quite fascinated with this new thing called AI that we're hearing a lot about. So I went on the internet and I looked up ChatGPT or ChatGTP, whatever it is, and I asked it, what are examples of not good leaders, bad leaders? And ChatGPT gave me this information. It's a little bit more nuanced than YouTube. It says, poor leaders do not listen. It said that they are inconsistent, they lack understanding, they blame others for their own mistakes, and they burden others and themselves with excessive responsibilities. Wow. Wow. So that's what makes a bad leader. But just one moment, then I thought, there's one other place that I need to research when I'm talking about leadership. What makes good leaders? What makes bad leaders? So I thought, what does God say about this? So I looked at the Bible, and this is what the Bible says about leadership. It says, a leader is someone who takes care of their flock, someone who searches for the lost, someone who rules with gentleness and saves their best for others. So kids, today in Sunday Club, you are going to be learning more about examples of good leadership and bad leadership from the Bible. So before we go out to Sunday Club, let me pray. Lord God, thank you that your book, the Bible, reveals to us so much about what it means to be a good leader and what it means to be a bad leader. And we pray that we will learn more about this and more about you in Sunday Club today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. Um, today we have two readings, as usual. We have um, a reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, um, and then we have uh, the chapter 5 of Revelation. So we'll start with Matthew, verses 35 through to 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Now, Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel, angel proclaiming with a loud voice, 
Who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing, as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and he took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands and th of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing, to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. For the word of the Lord. Well, it is a great uh, delight to be with you again. Thank you so much, John, for your invitation uh, this Sunday. Well, you watch the evening news and the uh, newsreader says good evening and then tells you why it isn't for the next half an hour. How wonderful then to have this glorious vision of God and of Christ in Revelation chapter 5. God the Father, the one seated on the throne, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, standing like a lamb, slaughtered, but alive. This slaughtered but standing lamb taking the scroll from the right hand of God the Father. And then the four living creatures and the 24 elders falling before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints, our prayers. And then the song, they sing a new song. You're worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priests, serving our God, and they will reign on earth. What a majestic and magnificent and compelling vision of eternal reality. What a majestic and magnificent and compelling vision of the future of our world, the future of this universe. Not only a picture of the vision of the power of God, 
not only a vision of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, but even more wonderfully, a vision of a countless throng of people ransomed by the blood of Christ, saints from every tribe and every language and every people and every nation. If you get depressed by the evening news, my advice is keep an open Bible on the top of your television. Open at Revelation chapter 5. Because amidst all the bad news of this age, here is some good news of our future and of eternity. And this vision is not unachievable. The church of Jesus Christ is the largest and longest lasting multicultural, multi ethnic, multinational group of people. So there is God's vision. What is our responsibility? Well, our responsibility, as Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 28, is to make disciples of all nations. And it is by making disciples of all nations that we play our part in this great and glorious and majestic vision being achieved. But there is, at the present time, a shortage of gospel workers around the world. There's a shortage of gospel workers in Australia. Many churches don't have ministers and won't find ministers because there are none available. We need many gospel workers to fill the gaps in Australia at the present time, let alone the future. And we need many gospel workers to fill the gaps that already exist overseas. And of the 8 billion people in the world today, 3 billion have no access to Christianity, no access to a Bible, no access to a church, no access to news about the Lord Jesus Christ. That is three in every eight people in the world. Well, we understand these shortages, don't we? There's a shortage of teachers in Australia. There's a shortage of doctors in Australia. There's a shortage of nurses in Australia. And those shortages will only be made up if more people become doctors or nurses or teachers. I've got a friend who is now in an aged care facility and she said that all the staff are overseas born and she can't actually understand what they're saying because she is deaf and their English is not Australian English.
And whose responsibility is it to raise up gospel workers for our world? Whose responsibility is it to make disciples of all nations? The answer is ours, yours, and mine. When I was the principal at Ridley, our churches would often ring up and say, look, we've, we've finally got rid of our minister or something like that, tactful words like that, and uh, we're rather desperate for another one. Have you got anyone to recommend? Or they'd say, you know, we're, we'd like to start some youth ministry, good idea. Uh, have you got a spare youth minister you could send out or something like that? And I'd say, well, actually, there's quite a shortage at present, and I'm sorry, but there's a long queue, and you're at the end of it, uh, and that's the back end of it, not the front end of it. <laughs> and if I was feeling particularly frivolous and adventurous, I would say, well, you've rung up to get uh, someone to do some gospel ministry. How long is it since you, as a church, have sent someone to train for gospel ministry? It's a fair question, isn't it? Why should you expect other churches to be busy meeting your needs if you're not playing your part? I don't think that that conversation was ever productive, but I, I at least felt better for having, <laughs> having said it and got it off my chest. For where will future gospel workers come from if not from our churches and our Christian organisations. Just think, a future Archbishop of Melbourne is in your Sunday school. I looked at them this morning and I thought, I, which one it, I wonder which one it is. <laughs> I suspect the most mischievous. That's my, that's my hunch. Now, I'm not saying that other jobs are not important. Of course they're important. I'm particularly thankful for sewage workers because I've read enough history to know what happens when sewage banks up and it's found in public streets and thrown out of top windows of houses on those who are walking below. So if you're a sewage worker, keep doing it. Don't stop, my advice. We need you. And uh, when I walk along the uh, pavement, I'm uh, uh, where I live in North Carlton, I'm so thankful for whoever laid the pavement because it's dead flat and I don't trip over as elderly people are prone to do. So if you're a pavement layer, keep at it. We need you. But amidst all the many needs in our world and many responsibilities, we have to undertake the many different ways in which we can love our neighbour by the daily work we do, paid or unpaid. Amidst the many ways in which we can love our neighbour in this world, here is one way. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The same problem, isn't that interesting? The same problem. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Hands up those who say the Lord's Prayer during the week and on Sundays. Actually, two Lord's Prayers. Two prayers Jesus told his disciples to pray. One was, Our Father in heaven, and so forth. 
The other Lord's Prayer, the other prayer that Jesus told his disciples to pray is this one. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Have you ever prayed that prayer? It's a great prayer to pray. Great prayer to pray yourself in your own prayers. Great prayer to pray in your Bible study group or home group. A great prayer to pray every Sunday. A great prayer to pray with your friends. Lord of the harvest, send out laborers into your harvest. Lord of the harvest, send out laborers into your harvest. You might pray that prayer for this church. From this church, Lord, raise up laborers and send them out into your harvest. You might pray this prayer for Melbourne. Lord of the harvest, please raise up and send out many laborers into the harvest from Melbourne. You could pray this prayer for Australia, couldn't you? So we think about our responsibilities to the rest of the world. Send out laborers from Australia into your worldwide harvest. There is, as a matter of fact, a connection between the two Lord's prayers this one is, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The other Lord's prayer begins with, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Which is in fact saying to God, do whatever it takes to make your name known throughout the world. Do whatever it takes to make the name of the Lord Jesus known throughout the world. And parents, if your child is thinking of becoming a gospel worker, please do not discourage them Please do not think of your investment melting away before your very eyes as they head off into badly paid ministry. There's a wonderful story of the first two missionaries who went out from Melbourne, from the Church and Missionary Society, uh, who went off to China to bring the good news of the gospel there. Two young girls went off. Soon after they arrived, they were killed in an anti-Western kind of massacre. So their mother then decided to go to China to replace them to continue the work. That shows some determination, doesn't it? Some forgiveness, some grace, some obedience. And what if you or somebody you know says that they're thinking that perhaps God might be raising them up as a gospel worker for his great harvest. Please listen to them patiently. 
Please pray for them. Please suggest to them that they might like to, uh, as they read the Bible, look for instructions about what gospel workers need to be and what kind of people they need to be and what kind of priorities they need to have and how they need to live. And encourage them to ask other people to pray for them that if God wants to open this door, he will. And if he wants to close it, then he will close it. I think one of the sad things about our lives is that we are all so pressured. Uh, we all face so many demands that it's hard to think beyond the needs of today. It's hard to think of the future, of our own personal future. Hard to find space to do that let alone to think about the future of Australia or let alone to think about the future of the world, let alone to think about God's great gospel plan for the world. Although we have more and more information, I think, we have less and less energy to think widely and broadly and in the long term about what God wants to do in this world. And yet, what God wants to do in this world is the most important thing, actually. And it is the certain future which will shape this world and which will be accomplished when the Lord Jesus returns. And what is that certain future? When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with a full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that's in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. That is the future. That is the future of the universe. That's our cosmic future, the future of our world. That is what God will achieve when he gathers his people from every tribe and language and people and nation around his throne to worship and adore him and to worship and adore the Lamb forever and ever. I beg of you, keep this vision at the centre of your minds and hearts to give you hope every day. Keep this vision at the centre of your minds and hearts that you may have more and more confidence in God and more and more desire to worship God and the Lamb. And keep this vision in your hearts and minds that it will shape your prayers, that you'll have a passionate desire to see this future, this certain future, fulfilled. And keep this vision in your hearts and minds that you may join in that second Lord's Prayer, 
Lord of the harvest, send out labourers into your harvest. Lord of the harvest, send out labourers into your harvest. And when God answers your prayer, please love and support those labourers and please pray for them and for their work for the glory of God. Please sustain them and honour them for the lives they lead and the work they do. For God's glory. Amen. Thank you so much, Peter. So encouraging for us to hear. We're going to respond uh, in a time of prayer in a moment, but um, before uh, I start leading us in prayer, I wanted to highlight uh, prayer meetings that are going to be happening. Uh, this came about recently. I, uh, along with some colleagues, met with our bishop, Bishop Paul, and um, he was sharing from the scriptures at the beginning and from the book of Samuel. And he, he was talking about um, Samuel as he was leaving being Israel's leader. And the prophet Samuel says, Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. Now, Israel had rejected Samuel's leadership. They sought and got another king, or got their first king. And... Uh, Far from spitting the dummy, Samuel pledges to keep praying for Israel. And Bishop Paul said what he found striking was that for Samuel to not keep praying, even for a rebellious people who have rejected him, that it would be a sin. Not praying for people entrusted to us is a sin, Paul was saying to us. As ministers... We have such high responsibility uh, in carrying out Christian ministry, in praying for the church. The meeting went on to discuss the difficulties that churches face, budgeting difficulties, staffing. So many churches don't have ministers. We heard Peter talk about this uh, during his sermon. Uh, so many difficulties. Churches are closing down. Congregations are becoming uh, uh, less and less um, in, in attendance. Not many people are seeking ordination. Few workers. And so myself and my colleagues were all talking about these things. And finally, we stopped and thought, you know, there just seemed to be no answer. So then we started thinking about prayer. We need to be a praying church. As a result of this meeting, uh, Bishop Paul has called for his uh, episcopate, Jambana, which is the uh, area that we are in as a church. He's calling for all the churches in his area to come together and pray. And a date has been set aside for that. He's also encouraging every individual parish within Jambana to be prayerful. I felt personally convicted. When was the last time as a church we had a dedicated prayer meeting? So I came back from that meeting, spoke with staff, and we have decided to put a monthly prayer meeting uh, into the diary. I believe there's a slide. The first Thursday of each month at 7.30, there will be a prayer meeting for an hour at St. Thomas. I want to encourage you 
to come along and pray. We'll be praying for God to raise up gospel workers, praying for this great vision that God has for the world, praying for us as a church, praying for the various programs that we run, for the various ministries that are done by people within this congregation, within this church, and within Melbourne. You may want to talk about it with your small groups and say, how about the first Thursday of each month we attend that and we pray with the rest of the church. In addition, I, I, um, Paul spoke about the, um, the day of prayer and that will be organised, uh, the Jambana prayer day for Saturday the 29th of July. It's for 12 hours, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. It will be at the Glen Waverley Anglican Church, GWAC. Bishop Paul's call to pray, he said, I will be present the whole 12 hours on the 29th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I urge everyone in Jambana to come and join me in prayer for as short or long a time as able. Please put it in your diaries. He's hoping for at around about 500 people to come that day. A great time to come together and pray. Now let us pray. Almighty God, your son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. We pray for the nations and the whole world. Our whole world is in trouble. Bring to an end the current wars. We lift up Ukraine. We thank you for the leadership of their president, Vladimir Zelensky, and his resolve on behalf of his people to resist the invasion by Russian forces. Sovereign Lord, Please bring President Putin to repentance. Empower your church and the Russian people who oppose the invasion to speak out despite state threats. We pray for peace in Sudan, in Syria, in Yemen. Lord, there are so many countries with conflict, more than can be um, recognised here. and many more that have fragile institutions and society. Lord, we lift up these to you. Lord, our own generation has done so much harm to your creation. Our actions have resulted in excessive wealth for a few and extreme poverty for multitudes. Our actions have resulted in many poor people being displaced. Our actions have caused the extinction of innumerable species. Our actions have brought about the climate crisis. We pray, Lord, have mercy. So much damage and so many problems seem beyond our solving. So many feel helpless. So we pray, come Lord Jesus. Guide with your wisdom and power the leaders of the nations so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give to the people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, compassion and fairness, especially in relation to First Nations people of this land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for the church and we give thanks for Bishop Paul's leadership and his call for us to pray as we consider our nation's difficulties and those of the Australian church. And so we pray for reconciliation in Australia with First Nations people. Continue, O oh Lord, to raise up Indigenous leaders who glorify you. We thank you for those that you have raised up in times past we think of Nathaniel Pepper, Jason, uh, James Noble, William Cooper, 
Douglas Nichols, Pearl Gibbs, James Unipon, David Unipon, Bill Ferguson, and many other men and women Cause the church to be a light glorifying you in displaying reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. Heavenly Father, may we share in your great love for the world in Christ. Let your love compel your church to pray without ceasing, seeking your kingdom your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord of the harvest, raise up many in our churches to be evangelists, pastors, teachers, and cause your word to bear much fruit among us, fruit of repentance and fruit of the Spirit. Grant your church a deep hunger for righteousness and for your kingdom. Help us to offer ourselves wholeheartedly to you as living sacrifice. Keep us focused on your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. Set us free from our sins and let us run with his perseverance the race marked out for us. Help us, O Lord, by your spirit, give to us love for one another, humility in our serving, generosity in our giving, faithfulness in our living, diligence in our leading, sincerity in our love, hope when things seem hopeless, and your consolation when we suffer. We pray for St. Tom's and St. Edward's, our congregations, our programs, we pray for our playgroups, we pray for Tom's crew, uh, the Chinese 50 plus program, our small groups, Clay Youth, the youth camp, our parish retreat. We lift up all of these to you, Lord, and pray that your will would be done. Establish the work of our hands, O Lord. Establish the work of our hands through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send out the light and truth of your gospel to bring people everywhere to know and love you. Enable those who minister among us to commend your truth by their example and teaching. May we gladly receive and obey your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need among us. You may know people that are in need. Feel free at this moment to call out their name and we will include them in this prayer. We pray for those in need among us, Lord. We think of Kevin Giles. We think of Mandy. Of Morris, Murray, and many others. We commend to your fatherly care, merciful God, all who are in sorrow, sickness, discouragement, or any other trouble. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who care for them and bring us all into, your, into the joy of your salvation. Lord, have mercy. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for your servants, those uh, whose lives have honoured Christ. Encourage us by their example so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us and share with them the fullness of joy in your kingdom. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands upon thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. So we might think to ourselves, do we give him enough power, wealth, wisdom and honour in our lives? Let's think about that for a moment as we come before God to confess. Knowing the goodness of God and our failure to respond always with love and obedience, let us confess our sins, saying together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins, For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Hear these wonderful words of assurance for us who are trying to live up to this vision of who Jesus is. For when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the Lamb, and they sing a new song, singing, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God and they will reign on earth. Would you stand? We celebrate together that we are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us and the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. You might like to say hello to one another. Uh, I invite you to uh, return to your seats. We're going to sing together before we share communion at the Lord's table. Um, I invite you to return to your seats because we're actually going to sing this song together but in two parts. So if you're sitting over here on my left, then you'll be uh, singing a part with me. And if you're sitting over here on my right, you'll be singing a part with Andrea. Let me explain and then we'll sing. This song, Is He Worthy?, takes us deeper into this chapter 5 of Revelation and deeper into the evening news. Do you feel the world is broken? Well, we're going to sing about that together. In this song, there's call and response. Do you feel the world is broken? Sing that with me on this side. And on this side, you'll call in response. We do. 
Do you feel the shadows deepen on this side? Join with Andrew in singing, we do. So you'll get that rhythm for verse one. For verse two, we're going to flip it. And this side, we'll sing the first line with Andrea and we will call and respond. When you get to verse three, we're going to sing it all together. (laughs) Even if it's a bit messy, the idea is that we're singing to one another and we're singing together. So... on the left do you feel the world is broken do you feel the shadows deepen do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through do you wish that we could see it all made On this side, singing with Andrea. Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to the light within our midst? It is. Together in the chorus. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave. He's David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Sing an honor and glory. Is he worthy of this? Let's sing all of this verse together. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves, he does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us, he does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone seal and open the scroll. The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Let it bring love to thrive. Every nation and tongue. He has made us a king and a priest to God to reign with the Son. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please be seated. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your own image. We praise you for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, we lift our voices to praise you, saying, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine and pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share his body and blood. On the night before he died, on the night before he died, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we who share these gifts be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, there to feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. I invite those who are assisting with communion to come forward and receive first. All those who call Jesus their Lord, their friend, are welcome to receive at this table, to be nourished by him.
we are going to jump over our final song and pray together. Gracious God, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you for assuring us of your goodness and love and that we are living members of Christ's body. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise. Thank you for attending this service of worship today. If you would like to explore what it is like to work in gospel ministry, Peter will be here for some time. I'm sure he would love to chat to you, as would any of our staff team. Uh, We may warn you away from it. We may encourage you into it, but come and talk to us, please. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.